Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to Around the Town with Mark. I am Mark Whalen, your host. And yes, we are always glad to have you tune in and visit with us. We're going to have a very interesting show for you today. You're going to love it. Sit back and relax. I've been telling you a lot about some of the beautiful and historic buildings that we have all over our area. Well, today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most recognizable and iconic buildings anywhere in South Sea, Connecticut. It's a building you can see from, from the air, from land, from sea. It's been standing sentinel at the mouth of the Thames River for over 100 years. I'm talking about the Ledge Light. And my guest today is going to tell us all there is to know about the Ledge Light. Allow me to introduce to you the president of the all-volunteer Ledge Light Foundation, Todd Gipstein. Todd, welcome to Around the Town with Mark. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. I usually start with talking about a historic building with, with what our visitors would experience today. But in this case, let's start back with the history of the building. Could you tell us when it was built and how this building came to be? Okay, well, the need for the building arose in the early part of the 20th century when shipping really exploded around this area. And there was already the New London Harbor Light, the White Tower you see on Pequot Avenue. That was built in 1761 and rebuilt in 1801. And also Race Rock Lighthouse off the point of Fisher's Island, which was built in 1879. And they were the two primary beacons to get you uh, up the coast and into New London Harbor. But uh, they found with all this increased shipping and with the proliferation of, of buildings on shore and street lights and so on, that it was pretty hard to see the harbor light uh, up against the shore there. So the, uh, the government determined that they needed another lighthouse out, out offshore, out in the middle of the harbor uh, entry, uh, to guide mariners in. So uh, it was commissioned and it was built in 1909 by Thomas Scott, who also built uh, Race Rock Lighthouse and had uh, an engineer that was involved with the uh, Statue of Liberty base. And Scott built uh, this, this white base that you see here, and then the Chapman Douglas Company built the lighthouse on top of it. So it was uh, another aid to navigation so that Race Rock, Ledge Light, and the Harbor Light kind of form a pathway of beacons that get you into New London Harbor. And I understand that the design of the building was influenced by two of the wealthy residents It was uh, in the indeed. Area. It's a very, very unique building. It's a uh, kind of colonial revival French Second Empire. It's one of a kind. There's no other lighthouse like it. And Morton Plant, who uh, was building the Branford House, uh, his big estate uh, on uh, Avery Point in Groton, and uh, Edward Harkness, who had his in Waterford, were two very influential, powerful, rich gentlemen of the era. And the plan was originally to have what was called a spark plug or a can lighthouse, which kind of looks like a spark plug. It's just a metal can like Latimer's Reef or uh, Orient Point sticks out of the water. But they wanted something a little more gracious to reflect uh, the elegance of their homes and of the era. And they prevailed, whether just through influence or perhaps some financial contributions, not quite sure. But they uh, did prevail and got a much more gracious and elegant lighthouse designed and built. And speaking of, of money, I, I believe, if I, I read correctly, that uh, the building was constructed somewhere around the $115,000 range. That's Is that correct. correct? Yes. So in, in, uh, to me, that sounds, even in 1909 dollars, not like a whole lot of money for a structure that's built like... Uh, uh, so strong. I know this is, is uh, survived the 1938 hurricane yep. and yep. Lord knows how many other countless storms. It's an incredibly well constructed building. I mean it really uh, was built well and built to last and, and the proof is in the pudding. It's endured through a lot of severe weather. Uh, this base that you see here was uh, basically a crib that was built in Groton and floated out. It got hung up on the rocks, then they freed it and they brought it out and they sunk it down and they started to fill it with riprap, and, uh, which are large stones and cement, and built it up from the ledge, which is about 22, 25 feet underwater, until it broke through the water and they kept building it up here and these walls are nine feet thick. And then, as I said, the Chapman Douglas Company built the lighthouse uh, building itself on top of it. And I see with uh, three floors and I believe 11 rooms inside, is that correct? I think it's uh, actually about 13 uh, rooms inside altogether. 
and uh, depending on how you count the rooms in the basement, it's actually hard to tell because it's been reconfigured a bit over the years. Walls have been put up and so on. So it's 11, 13, something like that. And tell us about the condition of the interior. I know that there's been an ongoing for a long time restoration of the building. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what has been done and uh, what the a visitor would expect to see if they were to go there today? Okay, well, uh, when the Coast Guard abandoned it in 1987, it had been manned up until that point by various, the Lighthouse Board, the Lighthouse Society, the Coast Guard. But when the Coast Guard uh, took the men off in 1987 and automated it completely, uh, they kind of stripped out a lot of the, the fixtures and the furniture and the fixings and so on. So it was kind of left bare. And that was when the Ledge Lighthouse Foundation was created to become stewards of the light uh, from that point on. And over the years, uh, you know, a building that's out in the middle of the water takes a huge beating from, from wind and ice and rain and snow and just the waves and the weather. And uh, it, it began to deteriorate. And the foundation had various times when they, they did work on it and tried to do various restoration projects outside and in. Uh, and I have to say that when uh, my wife, Marcia, and I got on the board and really got involved in 2008 and put on a centennial gal in 2009, uh, we kicked the restoration preservation work into uh, high gear. So a lot of the superficial things, the walls have been patched and repainted, uh, things have been cleaned, ceilings have been fixed. Uh, we're in the middle of an ongoing window replacement program. We had inherited a pretty beat up building. Uh, it wasn't in good shape, a lot of leaks. The windows that the Coast Guard had put in the 80s were old, big, heavy aluminum ones and they were all broken. You couldn't keep them up yet. Well, now we still have to, on some of them, put blocks of wood to keep them up, and they're kind of dangerous. Mm. So uh, a lot of leaks, a lot of problems with the windows. So we've replaced um, 16 out of the 42 windows in the building. And tomorrow, uh, October 6th, we're going out with a crew of the Navy and putting uh, in three more windows with some window installers and some volunteers. So we'll be up to 19 uh, with more to go. So there were leaks in the roof, there were leaks in the windows, there's some cracks in, the, uh, in the, the brickwork that need to be repaired, a lot of rust that we had to deal with uh, on the railings, which aren't on this, and, and a big crane and so forth. So a lot of it was to, we've done is to stabilize the building and turn it around and get the preservation moving forward and ongoing problems uh, fixed so that it doesn't continue to deteriorate. Well, certainly I can imagine any homeowner, be it a new house or an old house, uh, and I have a lot of experience with old houses, is, is yeah, there's always something to be done. And to, and to have that building sitting out in the water exactly. like that is, 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 is... If you don't take care of it, we had a window that collapsed in on itself and therefore the window was open and there was a big squall and storm that came through and a couple of rooms got pretty, pretty wet from that and then the carpet started to get into problems. So, uh, yeah, if there's no one there, which we aren't for four months of the year to see, we have to make sure, like tomorrow when we go out and winterize, that it's buttoned up for the winter and it's secure and it's safe. Uh, but that said, you know, there had been damage over the years, leaks from the roof, and some of what we've done is kind of a band-aid to get us to the point where we can really do significant uh, restoration work. This lower base here that you can see was added after the main base was built. And it's basically a metal uh, sheathing that goes around and down 22 feet. And it's starting to peel away from the building. How do we know this? Well, we sent down divers in 2010 to take a look, to take core samples in, to really uh, study the base underwater and see what it was like. And we've had engineers and architects study the rest of the building. So the problem is if this continues to peel away, it could start to uh, attack the integrity of the main base, and we don't want that to happen. So we've shored up the part over here where we land uh, on our tours. We fixed that, but again, we need two or three million dollars probably to mm -hmm. completely restore and, and put on a, a new base. So it teaches you patience and long-term long thinking. It's, it certain, certainly does, and, and that's a good point for me to, to now to mention is that the lighthouse is not built on an island. No. It, it's built it, on a structure, so, and that's unique, I would think, uh, for, for a lot of buildings that are located where this is, how it is constructed. 
it is. Basically it, floating on the water. Well, it was quite an engineering free. It is attached to a ledge. It's called Ledge Light. So there is, it was originally called actually Southwest Ledge Light. Yep. And then it was renamed because it was the Southwest Ledge li uh, Light rather in uh, off New Haven. It was confusing. So it got renamed uh, Ledge Light. So it is uh, bolted down to basically the sea bottom there. And uh, that that has got good integrity. It's not going anywhere. But that said, it still is subject to the attacks of, of the weather and the sea. And you know, we've had the stairway up front here got so deteriorated from waves that beat it up and from rust that uh, we had to uh, basically stop the whole 2010 season and wait for the Coast Guard to replace it, which took a year to do. And tell us about tours. I know the building is obviously open for tours. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I think that, uh, that is a tour that begins at Pro Project O. Right, uh, right. So tell us about those. Well, the tours uh, have been going on for, for, for many years uh, with Project O from Avery Point. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot to see inside the building, you know, uh, beat up walls and, uh, and uh, plaster falling off and, and just kind of a mess, no exhibits and uh, piles of stuff that had been left there to be worked on and so on. So again, when we put on the Centennial Gal in 2009, we raised uh, a fairly good amount of money. Part of that went into the underwater uh, diver surveys we did, the architectural and, and engineering studies and reports. But we wanted to give something to the public to see uh, and not just have these reports that were sitting in offices for us to study. So we started the Interpretive Center in uh, 2011. And what that is basically is we turned uh, every room that we could into exhibits uh, and hallways. So we have... Uh, I think we have uh, excuse, yeah, a picture yeah, there, up Well, the there's Ernie's room. That's the only furnished room we have. And that's uh, a figure of Ernie, who is the ghost who uh, allegedly uh, haunts Ledge Lighthouse, part of the, the lore of it, the legend of it, and the color of it. Yeah, yeah. And that is a room that is ongoing and is still being worked on for uh, how a keeper's room would look. And so there's Ernie in his room. And other rooms have uh, exhibit panels about history, about the construction of the light, how lights work, uh, all sorts of things. In fact, one keeper who was there in the late 50s sent us a shoebox full of pictures uh, of life on ledge lights. So we turned those into really charming uh, exhibits of what it was really like to be a young guy living out there. So we have rooms full of exhibits. Um, and we have a theater, an air-conditioned theater, where we have about 15 or 16 seats and a 15-minute documentary I made that's the whole story of Ledge Light that people can see. Uh, we have a gift shop, and people can go from the tower. We just had a picture of them up top here where you can go up a couple of little ladders yep, and, there we go again. It's on and go out yep. to the catwalk here. And the best view in town, 360 degrees, just killer views of all of Long Island, New London Harbor, Waterford, New London, Groton, just, just beautiful. And you can go down the basement and see some of the, uh, the structure down there and see how it all works. So essentially, except for a room or two that are, are off limits because they're Coast Guard battery rooms and that kind of thing, uh, visitors have complete run of the building. We leave from Project O on their nice blue boat that holds about 50 people. 10-minute ride, 15-minute ride out to yep, the lighthouse. There's, a, there's the boat picture, yep. uh, approaching it. We circle around so everyone can get pictures of the light and all the selfies they like. Then we land here. Uh, there's a stairway. We get off. We go in. We, the, the trip out is narrated by one of our, our hosts, and we have a wonderful group of tour guides that uh, are all volunteers and part of the foundation. So they give a narrative on the boat ride out. They give a briefing when people get there, and they help the, uh, the flow of the tours. It's pretty much self-guided, but the, the guides point out things and answer questions and run the theater and the gift shop and so on. And uh, we keep things going, and you're on the lighthouse for about, oh, an hour and a half or so. And then, time and weather permitting, we take a tour into New London Harbor, often as far as almost to the bridge. And again, it's all narrated. We point out the sites and give people the history. So and what nice is tour. the usual season of the tour? When does that usually season start the, and, and end? We, um, we're, we play with different things, but because of weather issues, generally we don't start till July 1st. And we go July, August, and September. Uh, we have this year, and maybe next year we'll see how it goes, but we had tours Tuesday afternoon, like at 4 o'clock till 6.30, and then Saturdays from about 1 or 1.30, 1 o'clock till 3.30. 
and that was pretty much July and August, and then September, just Saturday tours. We also had some charters this year where groups uh, just got the whole boat, like Mystic Seaport did some and some senior center did some, so that they get a whole group, get the whole boat, and those are sometimes on different days. So we try to accommodate uh, what we can. Uh, staffing is the issue. We, we just need a lot of people to run the tours and administer them and, of course, get the boat from Project O, and it, it's always weather dependent. So this year, we didn't, really didn't have to cancel much of anything. Yeah, good. And I know you mentioned Ernie, so I have to bring up Ernie one more time. Everybody loves a ghost story, yep. and everybody loves a haunted building, mm -hmm. and uh, the lighthouse is haunted by Ernie. Ernie is a very famous ghost of Ledge Light, and uh, the story goes that uh, his wife left him for the captain of one of the ferries, and poor Ernie was left alone on the lighthouse, and he was brooding and despondent, and one day he couldn't take it anymore, and he climbed up to the top and uh, jumped off. Now, his body was never found. Uh, and Jim Streeter, who's on our board and Groton uh, Town historian, has done a lot of research on Ernie, and he couldn't find a keeper named Ernie who ever served there, or, or there's another name, I think, Rathburn. Anyhow, there's no historical evidence of a keeper having jumped. But that doesn't mean that it didn't happen, because history is full of lost documents and lost bits of information. Really? So it could very well have happened and just fallen through the cracks of history. And uh, as I say in the film I made, uh, Ernie's as real as we want him to be. He adds a lot of color. We've had psychics and paranormal investigators out, and they feel the presence and strange things have happened. So I don't weigh in one way or the other. Uh, I think uh, he, he probably is, is there in one shape or form. And uh, so much so that I actually wrote this book um, uh, called In the Shadow of the Light. And it's about a paranormal who goes out to investigate Ernie. Uh, and he spends the night at Ledge Lighthouse, and he goes mad. And then some years later, a writer, basically me, goes to an antique store and finds his case full of uh, ectoplasm meters and notebooks and various strange goggles and things, and he tries to figure out what this is all about. So the writer goes and spends the night on Ledge Light, and some strange things happen. And to find out all about it, you have to get in the shadow of the light which uh, we sell at the gift shop. It is also on Amazon, and proceeds go to uh, help uh, keep restoration work going on Ledge Light, as does some proceeds okay. from Legacy of the Light, which is about uh, Race Rock Lighthouse and the Hurricane of 38. And I should mention, we are all volunteer. We have no paid staff whatsoever, and 100% of our share of the ticket prices or revenue from the gift shop or donations or anything goes right back into preservation work on Ledge Lighthouse. And uh, I'm sure you're always looking for more volunteers. Mm -hmm. And uh, sponsorships, <coughs> and how, how can people contribute to the Lighthouse cause? A number of ways. They can go to our website and hit the Donate button. Uh, they can go to Donate uh, through sending us a check. Uh, they can get involved by just sending us an email at info at Ledge Lighthouse. Yeah, it's uh, right up on our screen right now, the email Tell us website. What you want to do, if you want to come out and learn how to be a guide, we'll train you, we'll team you up with more experienced guides so you get the feel of, of what this uh, two and a half, three hour tour is all about. If you want to come out and help us paint or restore or do carpentry work, whatever, let us know. Uh, if you think you might be able to help out with administration, that's a huge need we have. We have two big challenges now, the building, physical building itself, and running this business. And my wife spends sometimes 20, 30, 40 hours a week dealing with all the finances and we have contracts and we have e people emailing for information and we have charters we try to set up in January or February for the summer. Huge amount of administrative work to do, buying gift shop products, designing them, uh, getting inventory, all of that. Uh, I do all the exhibits and, and most of the design of things uh, that we put up on the walls there and we have someone who helps run the restoration parties. but. We just need help uh, in all ways and, and shapes and forms to, to run this uh, operation. Okay, well everyone please take a, take a note of the, uh, of the email, the website, the Facebook page. If you can volunteer any time at all or money, please contact them. They'll love to hear from you. And, and if you look at our website and especially our Facebook page, you'll see it's a really good group of people. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing this, uh, especially on the tours. But, you know, we need more people to, to get involved.
Certainly, certainly. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the items that you sell in the gift shop. Well, we sell the two books, as I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, we sell kind of typical stuff, t-shirts and hats and tote bags, and uh, we have patches, and we have uh, um, earrings and necklaces and, uh, I guess, magnets, and we have mugs and, you know, all that branded uh, with, with ledge light. We have art prints from, from myself and other photographers who have taken some stunning pictures of the lighthouse. And uh, we have um, just all sorts of things like that. And the only place you can get them is at the gift shop on Ledge Light. You, we don't do it online. You can't buy them around town in bookstores, the only thing, or, or, or any stores. Uh, you can buy my book online uh, with Amazon. Again, proceeds go to help Ledge Light. But all the merchandise we have is pretty much you come out on a tour, that's your opportunity to get it. And 100% goes back into work on the light. Okay, well, it's a, certainly a very, very good cause, and everybody loves to do a little bit of shopping. And we have polo shirts. I, I, I can't even keep track of it because we change it year to year. But yeah, I see you're, you're wearing one uh, yeah, today. Yeah, this is one yeah. of our, 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 uh, our nice denim shirts. And every year we add in, we have Christmas ornaments this year. Some years we had calendars, uh, you know, all sorts of different things. A very tiny room for the gift shop, so we can only stock so much. But uh, we try different things. We've got, uh, as I say, patches and and books and uh, uh, just trivets and different kind of things that people can have. Do you have uh, currently or are you seeking any uh, uh, corporate sponsorships? We don't currently have, we really run on a shoestring. We would love to get some corporate sponsorships. I said it takes a lot of t-shirts to come up with two or three million dollars to fix a base. Certainly. It takes a lot of t-shirts to come up with three hundred dollars to buy paint to fix it. So. We do need some, some, some foundation grants. We have gotten some grants from the state and from other people. That they're matching grants to help us do studies and to do the window project, but that means we have to match them. So that's difficult for us. If we get ten or 15000 that's great, but then we have to come up with the like amount on our own. It would be wonderful to get some non-matching grants that we can put into the restoration and uh, exhibit work. Okay, well, that's another call out to all of my viewers on Around the Town with Mark. I know you're out there. I've heard from you. I know there's lots of uh, businesses and corporations in our area. Uh, I know you're watching. Please take a note and uh, contact uh, the Lighthouse Foundation, see what you can do to have a corporate sponsorship for this wonderful, wonderful icon in our area. And as we're talking about that, uh, we've talked about uh, the windows and you're replacing mm -hmm. the windows. Mm -hmm. Do you have a master list of other major items that need to be addressed uh, to the building. We do. It's some about of the things this that we've thick. About. Uh, about that. Yeah, thing. we okay. have a very big master list. We have to do. We've we've done some some repairs on the roof. It's a copper uh, roof with lead beading seams. We need to do some more work on that. We have some ceilings inside on the third floor here that because the roof did leak at one point, we need to probably replace the ceilings. They're really not in great shape. Uh, there are some railings that we've, we've uh, fixed. There's a big crane that we fixed, but there's some serious old hardware we'd like to get off the building and out. Brick, it needs to be repointed and repainted. We've got a big crack on one side. We don't know quite, probably from settling, but that's a, a worry that we have to deal with. I think the layers, the course of the bricks are two layers thick, so it hasn't infiltrated much on inside yet. Uh, floors need to be, you know, sanded down and, and, and refinished. It just kind of goes on and on and on. So, um, you know, structurally, it survived, it was built so well, it survived well, and it, it has good integrity. But that said, uh, you know, there's deterioration that we have to, uh, to address, the windows being a, certainly a big part of it. And then this main lip here, we really are worried that as it peels away and in the winter water gets in, turns to ice and forms a wedge and pulls it off the base, it'll start pulling chunks of the base out. Then we have real, real problems. We did have, for example, a company, though, that volunteered. We had a 300, 350-gallon oil tank down there that was full of oil from 30 years ago and it was developing a tiny leak and we didn't want 300 gallons on the floor. So a, com a guy came on a tour who ran a company that environmental services that uh, does remediation and he volunteered to come out and drain all that oil out, cut the tank up and get it off the, the building. And that was a huge, huge donation for us. So that kind of thing, if there's people who do brick work or cement work or whatever who could, if not donate money and donate services, that would be tremendous too. Well, everyone, viewers, this is a call out to all of you, just as Todd said, 
if you don't have the money to give, but you have a specific skill that would benefit the lighthouse, by all means, please offer that skill. But I'm also hearing a great opportunity for a corporate sponsor or even an individual who would like to sponsor, maybe a adopt a program, Absolutely. adopt a, a adopt a, a foundation or or a roof, and yeah. and uh, make that a a major project yeah. for a sponsor. Yeah. It's a great opportunity. I should mention too, locally, Mozilla Carpeting donated three rooms full of carpet for us. We had a uh, pay for the installation, which was minor, but uh, that was a really nice donation there. So it's again the kind of thing if if you know think creatively. If there's something that you could do financially or with a workforce, we've had Stop and Shop come out and Levi Strauss and crews from the submarine come out. You know, manpower is also helpful to us. Uh, we don't have to pay for it, and we get a lot of work done and have a lot of fun doing it. Well, and as I mentioned in the introduction, it's such an iconic building. No matter where you are just about, and whether you're yep. in Groton or New London or Waterford or, or even Mystic, I'm sure, uh, you see this structure. Well, you know, uh, people, it's everywhere. people have asked us. The tours are so much fun, and we get such, such appreciation in our guest book. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, why do you do so much on this building, you know, that's out there? And my answer is simple. Ledge Light is part of the identity and, and the uh, maritime history and the soul of this region. It is, as you said, so iconic, one of the most iconic lighthouses in the country. And if we let it just deteriorate away to the point where it has to be torn down, they just put up a steel tower with a light on the top, we'll have lost a bit of our identity and our soul of this region, and people don't want to see that happen. And we know from the comments from people who come out and see what we've done and are sort of awestruck by how much we've done that they really appreciate it. Well, this, like you said, this is the type of building that if it were to be lost, you'd never be able to reconstruct impossible. this building. It, it would just be impossible. To the point of which we don't have property insurance on the building because the insurance company said, well, you can't rebuild this. So it, it, if, I mean, we have it for some of the items in it, but the structure itself is so unique and is irreplaceable. And that means we have to stop it from deteriorating so it, it, it falls apart on its own. It's not going to be torn down, but it could fall apart. So we are trying to stabilize it, which I think we've done, and move forward on preservation to get the integrity of it such that it could last for generations to come. That's our goal. And that is a reminder. It is still a working lighthouse. It is. It is, it is still an aid for navigation. It is. Uh, and uh, the Thames Street, this area, has a tremendous amount of economy uh, uh, tied in to our maritime uh, existence right. and history. The Coast Guard still take care of the light and the foghorn run by solar panels, but we are in charge of all the rest of the building and have been for 30 odd years now. So uh, if we don't take care of it, uh, then the structure that holds their light and their foghorn is going to go away. And even though people say, you know, we've got GPS, do you need a lighthouse? Well, if the batteries of your GPS go down, you certainly would like to see that beacon shining at night to guide you home safely. And speaking of the beacon, I believe the original lens of the building can be seen at the Maritime Museum in New it London. Can. It's Is that in correct? New London. It was removed in the 80s. It's over there. And it's a gorgeous jewel of glasswork that is definitely worth a trip to see. What's up there now is kind of an industrial plastic lens that works fine. That's what they replaced them with. But the original, which really is a work of art and was made in Paris, that you can see on display and it's, it's worth looking at. Yeah, well, the Maritime Museum of New London is fascinating and I know that those old lenses and lighthouses are really true jewels. Absolutely, yes. really, quite yes. amazing. Yeah, well, Todd, I, I want to thank you very, very much for being my guest on Around the Town with Mark today, talking about this beautiful, iconic building. Uh, any uh, final words for our viewers, our audience? Uh, no, uh, just we're in our off season, but if you see these cards around town or posters uh, or come to our website, I think the best thing to do is come out, out to the lighthouse next season, see it for yourself, see, feel the space, walk where the keepers walk, see the work we've done, enjoy the tour, and I think you'll want to get involved. Uh, we're really preserving a, a maritime treasure, and it's not our lighthouse, it's yours. So please come out, out and see it share it, and if you can, help out. Well, that's very, very well said. And again, thank you so much for, for being my guest my today. Mark. And obviously, I want to thank all my viewers for tuning in today. I told you it was going to be a great show, and I think it was. The ledge light, everyone sees it. If you're going over the Gold Star Memorial Bridge, look down the river, you'll see this fabulous lighthouse. You can see it from Eastern Point Beach, 
anywhere in New London, Waterford, like I say. It's, it's a, a fabulous, fabulous building. Many of you have seen it but haven't visited it, so put it on your list for next season. It's definitely worth it. I've been out to it. It's a fun, it's a great boat ride. Uh, it makes for a beautiful, beautiful day, be it summer or fall. And again, thank you for being on Around the Town with Mark. I look forward to seeing you again soon. We'll have another great show for you coming up in no time. Have a wonderful day. Visit that lighthouse, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you, and goodbye.